and welcome to What's the Alternative? Where we take a portion of scripture, we unpack it a little bit, look at what God is saying through the text, and we ask ourselves, what's the alternative? Today, um, I want to focus on a portion of scripture that we find in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 34, but specifically looking at the final sentence of verse 34, which is a great promise of God. The, the sentence says, God says through this text, I will forgive their wickedness. I will remember their sins no more. I will forgive their wickedness. I will remember their sins no more. You know, God is a promise keeper. He keeps his word to us. And if God says something's going to happen, it happens. Not usually, not sometimes, not most of the time. Always happens. You know, in the world that we live, many people make us promises. Um, I promise to pay. In fact, if you look at any currency, it says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand. You know, there's a promise there. People will say, I promise to keep your secret. I promise to make my bed, mum. I promise to buy some milk from the shop. I promise. Even a wedding ring is a symbol of a promise. But here in this text, God, in the context of this particular text, God is talking about a text, a promise, sorry, that he makes to us as his people. We're born in sin. We're born in sin. We live in sin. But we cannot come to God through our sinful nature. We come to God having repented, or we come to God with repentance to turn away from our sinful nature. And what does God do? He meets us with a promise. A promise of a life anew. Not just saying, I will give you a new life. He says, I will forgive wickedness. And there's newness right there. He says, I will remember the sins no more. And what this text is showing us is that we have this multifaceted, multi-sided promise of God to restore us, to renew us, to cleanse us, and to have no record of our old life. Indeed, he's calling us to do the same, to live like that, as people whose wickedness is forgiven, people whose sins are not remembered. And you know, when I think about that, I think about um, the difference, you know, when people will often say, um, it's a new start, and because it's a new start, you need to turn over a new leaf. You need to start a new page, people will often say. And what this text is saying is God is saying, I'm not just starting a new page, I'm starting a new book. You see, the difference between a new page and a new book, with a new page, you can turn back. That's often, sometimes, you know, you may have been there where perhaps you, um, you offended somebody, you upset somebody, and you went and you asked for forgiveness, and they said, yes, 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 I forgive you. But they still hold on to it. They don't quite let it go. And God is saying here, I'm not just turning a new page when he says, I will forgive the, your, the wickedness of the people, my people. I will forgive their wickedness. He's not just turning a new page. He says, I will remember their sins no more. He's starting a new book. There will be no record, no evidence of our past mistakes. And God is calling us to live in that revelation, to live in that liberty, to live in that freedom of a new life in him. A new life where our wickedness is forgiven and a new life where our sins are no longer remembered. After all, what's the alternative?